everyone. This is Philip Boole, the game director for Dawn of War 3, here with the first chunk of gameplay. I'm on my way, but it's just me. Don't be reckless. Wait for backup. There's no time. They'll kill you. They can try. Here in this demo mission, we're starting with Gabriel Angelos on planet Akron. I will not falter. This place is already swarming with Eldar. I need to find their main portal before this planet is overwhelmed. Gabriel's a familiar face to Dawn of War fans. He's been in both of the previous Dawns of War. As a hero, he's a really good example of our elite heroes who are these special characters that you pick ahead of a match. He's a upfront melee fighter with a hammer spin and a hammer smash. Got him down! And then an ability called God Splitter, named after his hammer, which allows him to jump over gaps. None of you are safe. Gabriel's an interesting hero in that he's really straightforward at first. He's just a big guy who smashes things with his hammer. But there's a lot of hidden gameplay depth there. That hammer spin that he just did, for example, will also deflect projectiles, send a grenade or a missile back at the guy who threw it. So he's really a hero that you can play in your first game of Dawn of War or your hundredth game of Dawn of War. But he's not invulnerable, so I think he's gonna need some help here. Say hello to Lady Solaria, our Imperial Knight, a super unit for the Space Marines. She's a massive mech with Gatling guns for arms that do things like this Gatling barrage. Typically she'd be a late game unit, but in this demo we bring her in to show her off. You're early, Solaria. I expected to be bleeding at least. I told you backup was coming. What were you thinking? We'd be hopelessly outnumbered if I had waited. There are too many troops coming from that portal. Sire, this is the strike cruiser Dauntless. We've landed troops to your position. Can we use the Dauntless's guns to take out this portal? We need eyes on it first. We'll have to fight our way there. The hard way it is then. Dawn of War 3 is a game about using armies and heroes together. And you can see that we're bringing back base building from Dawn of War 1. Um, in this demo, we've provided most of a base building a barracks, summoning some more units from another building. In a typical game, you'd be building most of the base yourself and building up your strike force. Here I have some line units, which are the typical RTS units. So I have tactical marines and the dreadnought I just built alongside my two heroes. So I'm gonna use them to push into the Eldar lines and take this strategic point here. So I'm using Gabriel to soak up a lot of damage here because he's a tank and my line units and Solaria to lay down some fire. This is an example of a resource point or strategic point. Uh, there's only one in this demo but typically on a map they would be scattered around and they are what you fight over in order to gather resources and build more line units to get your army up to size. So I'm capturing the point, I'm gonna build a listening post on it and then we'll push forward. Destroy. You know, the choice is really up to you whether you want to use your line units principally and use the heroes in support roles or push the heroes forward and use the line units to soak up fire. Um, that's one of the strategic and tactical choices you have in Dawn of War 3. So while my guys take out these Eldar, you can see that ring of structures towards the top of the screen where I'm sending my tactical marines. That's our new cover system. Um, 
cover is essentially a point that you capture that then provides complete protection from ranged fire until its health is depleted. So my tactical marines are safe in there. You can see the fire bouncing off the screen. Dauntless. Launch drop pods behind their lines. Space Marines deploy units to the front line in drop pods. We saw building from a base. This is building in space and dropping more line units right on top of the enemy. So here we have Assault Marines, but you can see the Eldar are fighting back. I'm going to try and use Solaria to catch all these Eldar Wraith Guard. But I actually don't get many of them. Fortunately, my Dreadnought takes out a few, but the others at the top of the screen escape. And that's a good example that even with a powerful unit like Solaria, skill and timing are paramount. So I said that ranged units were safe in cover. I can see some Eldar at the top of the screen trying to take a cover area. But they're safe only from ranged fire. Melee units like my assault marines can go right in there and you can see them moving in to take the cover. Assault Terminators stand ready. Requesting my third elite is ready, the assault terminators. They're another melee specialist and I'm gonna use them to take that cover on the left of the screen teleporting them in, and they're going to take care of those Dark Reapers that are inside. So they can go in without destroying the cover, deal with the enemy, and capture the cover itself. That way I can use it. There we go, now they're taking it. My troops are taking out that webway portal, which is how the Eldar move around, and we're going to push forward. Okay, the Eldar popping in again, so it's time to use Iron Storm Missile Barrage, Solaria's second major ability. I can target six places and fire six devastating missiles. Again, skill is involved. Those Howling Banshees got out of the way. But because Solaria was supported by Gabriel and the rest of the troops, we were able to eliminate them. All right, moving my Assault Terminators to capture that cover. Fight into more of these Eldar here, trying to push them off the point. I'm going to use my range units to take out that cover, uh, but the Eldar now have a tank out. So I'm going to need to deal with that sooner rather than later. So you can see I'm using range units to take out the cover, so I need to blast all the way through the cover before I can deal with the enemy. Okay, now I'm going to use drop pods again and bring in last cannon devastators. These guys chew through armor, so they're a good counter against that tank. But they're a lot more vulnerable at close range, so these wraith guard at the bottom of the screen are going to do some serious damage, and Solaria is going to need to lay down some fire. All right, I'll bring in some more drop pods. And here you'll see they're actually healing some of the units around them. That's an effect of having Gabriel as one of my elite heroes, uh, as well as being a powerful unit. These elites will have sort of effects on the army as a whole. Gabriel's a commander who fights with his men, inspires them. So one of the ways we're expressing that is while he's on the field, if you bring in drop pods, it'll heal some units. <laughs> All right, I've got a pretty sizable army here. I'm gonna keep bringing in some more forces and you'll see the Eldar have a pretty healthy force waiting for me. The entire invasion force. The portal too. Press forward. They brought everything. Exactly! Okay, so I'm going to send my line units in with an attack move order here and concentrate more of my attention on my elites. 
bring in another Dreadnought to do some damage. Gabriel's going up and mixing it up with those range units up north. And Solera is going to use her missile barrage. You may notice Solera is moving a little more slowly now. That's because she's overheated. But the overheat isn't all bad. It also gives secondary effects to her attacks. And her missiles will leave pools of fire that will clean up any enemies who survive the initial barrage. Okay, now we're going to bring in Orbital Bombardment, which is the Space Marine's peak super ability. Uh, we've had this in previous Dawns of War, but never like this. Now it's an ability that I cast and I can then control the beam like I would another unit. As it hits more and more targets, it'll get bigger, but it'll slow down. This means there's interesting counterplay where the opponent can get out of the way, can send in cheap units to slow it down to get more valuable units out of the way. But in this case, these slightly underbalanced Eldar will soak it up. This is a bit of a highlight mission. A full mission will have far more strategic depth to it, more pathing choices, and so on. But this gives you a good idea of the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay.